Radhe Radhe everyone welcome back to our channel learn with gigs in this video i will discuss with you five very important power bi service interview questions so i have seen a lot of people getting rejected just because they have not prepared power bi service interview questions or topics very well they were well versed with power bi desktop concepts dax modeling everything but due to less fundamental knowledge and clarity of power bi service they got rejected because nowadays it is equally important to learn power bi service along with power bi desktop so this video will be very very important for you all so stay tuned till then whatever i am speaking and whatever counter questions and answers i am giving please listen it carefully and the same way you have to answer in your upcoming data analyst power bi interview so let's start the video and before that please do hit the like button of this video it really motivates me to bring more useful videos for you all i've seen a lot of people not liking the video please do like it it's a humble request it really motivates me subscribe to the channel if you are new to it and you can also follow me on instagram learn with gigs all right let's start with the first question very very important and very very commonly asked question is what are the different types of licenses available in power bi service and what license you will be going ahead as a developer this question seems to be very easy but eventually you all give wrong or incomplete answers also many of you think free license is also a type of license no because that is only for 60 days only 60 free days are available and after that you have to switch towards the three licenses in power bi service and what are those three licenses one is power bi pro second one is premium capacity third one is premium per user capacity as a developer you should have a power bi pro license with the pro license you will get all the features and capabilities to develop maintain and support the reports in a workspace and manage workspace in power bi service second comes the power bi premium capacity so if i say to you that do you have a premium capacity that is the wrong statement because premium capacity is backed by a workspace so we should never say that premium capacity is a user based license it's basically a capacity based license which is given to a workspace this is the answer that you have to give as soon as you say that it's a user based license or you have a premium license you are creating a negative impact it shows that you don't have any practical fundamental knowledge and if your workspace is backed by a premium capacity you get additional features and one of the most important feature is that you can share your developed power bi report to a large audience without letting them have any kind of additional power bi license and so this is very very important factor of premium capacity but in addition to this you also you also need to say that after 1st february 2025 things has been migrated from premium capacity to fabric capacity many of you don't know about this update right if you are watching this video many of you will hear this for the first time premium capacity which are basically psqs have been migrated to fsqs which is fabric capacity so now everything from premium capacity is being backed and migrated to fabric capacity which is particularly related to azure i hope you are clear with that next one is premium per user license again the name only suggests it's a user based license which has all the features of a pro license as well as it has all the features of a premium capacity license also so this premium per user license is not widely accepted as per my knowledge companies stick with the capacity based license which is fabric or premium and the developers have pro license so this is the overall information that you have to present in front of the interviewer and and that's how you can create impression rather than directly saying and answer few theoretical things moving on to the question number 2 which is what about the gateways when do we require gateways and what are the different types of gateways so what are gateways gateways are basically a bridge which helps you to connect power bi service which is basically cloud to your on premise data sources which include sql server so basically it acts like a bridge which actually will help you in refreshing your local data to the cloud now we have two types of gateways one is personal gateway and the second one is standard gateway companies and organizations uses standard gateways if they are using on premise data sources and also will help you integrating with services like power apps power automate sharepoint etc and with this gateways the counter question is how many times 
a day you can refresh your data set if it's an on-premise database so the maximum number of times is 48 times a day you can refresh your data set the only condition is that your workspace should be backed by a premium capacity license then only you can refresh your data 48 times a day counter question of this will be if you have to refresh more than 48 times a day then what will you do in that case your answer should be we should make use of power automate to fulfill this condition where we have to refresh more than 48 times a day using power automate you can create a cloud flow and that, and that will eventually help you to manage this kind of condition moving on to the question number three what are data flows and what is the practical use case of a data flow data flow is basically online power query so one of the best use case of data flow is for example you don't you don't have a calendar table created in your database and you have different fact tables and dimension tables available and you need to create multiple reports and utilize the same calendar table in all of your reports in that case what you can do you can create a data flow and you can create basically a calendar in that and make use of the same calendar which, which is basically a data flow in all of your power bi reports so you are so you are creating a one data flow and utilizing it multiple times in different reports so this is the best use case of a data flow so in this way you have to present your answer for a data flow i hope this is clear to you now moving on to the question number four which is what are the different types of roles available in a workspace so we have four type of roles one is viewer level second one is contributor level third one is member level and the fourth one is admin level mostly the question comes around contributor and viewer and member what does viewer do if somebody has viewer level access what he or she can do they can only view and interact with developed data and report they can't do any kind of editing coming to the contributor they have that facility to edit update or delete any report in a workspace and if we talk about member level member level have all the features of a contributor level plus they have additional feature of adding more people in the workspace with a different role which are lower than member or equivalent to member also i have the capability to manage apps apps feature in a workspace which a contributor does not have very very important distinguishing factor that you can present in the interview and admin as the name suggests admin has all the capabilities they can remove people they can add people they can delete workspace they can create workspace anything they can do we have many other differences also but this is the main primary differences between all the four of them moving on to the question number five which is very very important if you have developed your power bi report how will you share it with your end users many of you would have faced this question in your interview what what are your ways of sharing your report to the business users so the two most and frequently used practical ways are one is that if the business users are limited what you can do you can give them a viewer level access in your workspace itself in the workspace only you give them the viewer, viewer level access and they can view the report and interact with that but if you have a large number of people for example 200 300 people and you have to share your report to all of them then this is not a feasible option right in that case we have to go for update app feature in power bi service of our workspace the only prerequisite is you need to have premium or fabric capacity based license available to that workspace if you have that you can utilize this update app feature and you can just generate an app link and share to all those 200 and 300 plus people the same link they don't have to get any kind of license to view that they just need to click on that link and they can be able to view the report as per the role level security placed if any so i hope everything whatever i have discussed is clear to you now share this video within your network and stay tuned for the upcoming videos and please do leave a comment if you like this video thank you